I have so many questions for you, but I want to talk about the workplace of the White House, given that you used to run it, and maybe walk through some of the decision making that's taken place uh, over these past several days. Lots of questions about what we've been hearing uh, from the doctors, but also just even the timeline of what's happened. We heard uh, from the White House that quote, White House operations made the decision for the president uh, to ultimately go to Bedminster. Uh, question about that, because you, you've lived inside the Oval Office. Who would make a decision like that? I, I can't be at White House operations unto itself. I assume there's people who would make that decision. Sure. Good morning, Andrew. And uh, thanks again for having me. By the way, I uh, listened on the earlier segment. Those are absolutely his, treat, his tweets at this time of day. We can go into that later on if you want to, but that's actually the president tweeting. Um, but let's talk about the way the White House uh, should work, um, because I saw some of that stuff over the weekend that said the White House operations made the decision for the president to go, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the way it, it, it should work, the, the, the doctor really drives the, uh, the, uh, the story here. And by the way, Sean Conley, tremendous uh, doctor, tremendous uh, military officer. He, I put my life in his hands many times, would do so again. He was the one in charge of the tests. And if the tests would come back positive, he would then tell the person in charge of White House military operations, which is a guy by the name of Tony Ornato. Again, a superstar guy, was a career Secret Service guy, led the president's detail, came back to run White House military operations um, probably about the beginning of this year. Um, but it wouldn't stop there. But it would go up um, to the chief of staff. Both of those folks work for the chief of staff. Um, and that flow of information would take, I don't know, 35, 45 seconds. Keep in mind, the White House uh, we don't know where he is or she's on the other line. Isn't really uh, that doesn't exist in that world. So that information would flow very quickly. So I, I don't think it's it's likely that the decision was made uh, by the operations. If it is, then things have either changed since I was there or they weren't working properly. But at the end of the day, I don't think that really matters. I think the president's health is what matters, and I'd be happy to talk about that as well. Some of this morning, uh, I do want to talk about that. But one of the things. I, as I said earlier, you know, we're all rooting for him. And I think at this point, I, I, I hope we're all trying to assume the best and assume that, that, that he's going to make it through to the other side of this. My question is whether you think that this experience is going to change him at all. And when I say change him at all, obviously, he has been somebody who has, who has um, had lots of questions about masks, has not pushed for things like that. Historically, uh, he's I mean, we can we can go through the list. You know, he, he's made fun of Hillary Clinton when she had pneumonia, uh, gone after reporters uh, being shot at uh, and the like. And I wonder whether this kind of moment you think actually will change the president or if he recovers as quickly as uh, we all hope he will. He doesn't change at all. Yeah, I, I think it's a basic premise here um, when you're dealing with folks who are this successful in life and this advanced. I mean, he's 74 years old. He's been doing this for a long time. He's who he is for a long time. So I think the bottom line there is, no, it's, it's not likely to change him. I was watching uh, Scott Gottlieb in, this, in the previous segment, and he talked about how maybe they could have been a little bit more careful and didn't do things exactly perfectly. They're, they're, you're never going to keep this president locked in his basement. That was never going to happen. Yes, you could have put him in a bubble inside the West Wing. Yes, you could have restricted him to where no one would actually come in contact with him. But that's not this president. So he was always going to have uh, contact with people, always going to want to go out. He's a true extrovert. He likes uh, interacting with people. So I think what the staff was trying to do is, is balance um, the demands of health versus the demands of the president's personality. So no, uh, do, I, do I think but that Do you think his, mes his message to the American public about COVID changes? Um, I, I don't know. I think the message is still, look, we have to, yes, you have to take health into consideration. There's no question about that. But there's other costs here, and the shutdown of the economy has costs. Suicides are up. Drug abuse is up. Um, domestic abuse is up. Divorce is up. There are costs to that as well, and I think the president will continue to try and, and drive, the, drive the message that there's more here than just health, and I don't think that's going to change. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.